Hi, everybody. Um, so my name is Amnit, and I completed my practicum with Island Health, where my primary project was conducting an environmental scan for a men's health report. So my practicum placement was with the Population Health, health Assessment and Epidemiology team at Island Health. Uh, this team supports the work of the medical health officers and public health program areas through health data acquisition, information synthesis, surveillance, evaluation, and analysis. So I thought I would give a little bit of a background before I get into talking about my project. Uh, so the Island Health medical health officers play an essential role in promoting and protecting the health of the population. So along with responsibilities around advocating, consulting, and management, they're also responsible for monitoring and assessing the health and well-being of the population. Um, so they also develop population reports, briefs, and profiles. Uh, the MHOs have decided that the next population health report will focus on the health of men across the region. So why men's health? Um, emphasis is often been placed on women's and girls' health as a means to address the gender equity and health gap. And the MHOs recognize that men's health and health-related issues often go unrecognized. Uh, but men are more likely to face poorer health outcomes and avoid discussing or dealing with health challenges. Uh, the MHOs are aware that bringing attention to and addressing the unique health challenges that men um, experience are essential. So a foundational step to developing an Island Health men's report was conducting an environmental scan. Uh, so my project was to conduct an environmental scan to uncover emerging and significant topics in men's health, and as well as explore the various formats by which organizations present their information and data. So the information gleaned from the scan informed a list of potential health domains and indicators for the report. So the methods I used to conduct my scan included assessing publicly available gray literature at the local, or local, national, and international level. So in consultation with the project working group, uh, the following inclusion criteria were established. I looked for reports, web pages, websites, campaigns, and infographics, and multimedia that focused on the health and health-related issues of men 18 and over that were published in the last 10 years. Um, written in English, and I used Canadian and international sources and products that were readily available online. So the primary data sources I accessed to find relevant info included the Google search engine and the Gray Literature Report database, uh, which is, I was sorry, which was created by the New York Academy of Medicine, and it catalogs public health and health policy reports from different organizations. I also used um, different health organizations and agencies' websites, like the World Health Organization and the Canadian Men's Health Foundation. I ended up using a little bit of a snowball strategy, um, as many of the organizations that I accessed offered resources from other agencies or links to other websites. Um, I also searched each BC Regional Health Authority's online resources and social media outlets, specifically Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, um, were scanned for relevant organizations, campaigns, and multimedia. So all in all, I reviewed 45 products. Uh, some of the reports and products provided a broad overview of men's health, while some focused on particular aspects, such as cancer or mental health. So the health and health-related topics and issues that emerged from the scan included gender-based disparities, uh, particularly in regard to lifespan and health outcomes, uh, notions of masculinity, which was a theme interwoven into all the topics, but it was emphasized the most in regard to mental health, uh, lifestyle choices and uh, illicit drug use and addiction, smoking, alcohol consumption and physical inactivity were the most discussed lifestyle factors and accidents, injuries, and violence. So numerous reports highlighted that accidents and violence-related injuries can be prevalent among men as they're more, sorry, as they're more likely to take risks, and gender-specific careers can mean that men are more likely to be employed in environments with dirt, noise, and stress, which can ultimately increase health and injury risk. Oops, sorry. Um, Non-communicable and communicable diseases. So the most commonly discussed diseases are cancer, diabetes, cardiovascular diseases, and sexually transmitted diseases. Uh, sexual health and reproduction. So much of the discussion among reports around this topic focused on embarrassment and uncomfortableness men experience um, around discussing sexual health problems and thus avoiding accessing health services. Uh, the social determinants of health. So the most commonly dis discussed determinants were 
early childhood development, uh, education, employment, income, and social inclusion. And finally, marginalized and minority men. So a handful of reports looked at um, population groups that can be at risk of experiencing health inequities. Um, so this included indigenous men, visible minority men, and sexual minority men. So I developed five domains which reflected the key topics and issues that emerged from the scan. So potential health indicators that were extracted from the reports and products were categorized under the relevant domain. So the domains include population and demographics, health status, access and utilization of health services, lifestyle, and social determinants of health. So the extracted indicators cover a range of issues that can hopefully help offer a comprehensive perspective on men's health in the region. Uh, so some of the indicators included prevalence of mental health disorders by age, uh, unemployment by ethnicity, and perceived stress by socioeconomic status. A uh, secondary goal of the scan was to explore how information about men's health and health-related issues are disseminated by organizations. So there's hope that the Island Health Report can be distributed to the public and stakeholders in an innovative manner or via a new platform. So while a majority of the reports use text along with charts than tables and pictures, uh, several organizations also presented information in more innovative manners. So some examples were infographics, uh, testimonial videos, and community profiles and case studies. So organizations and agencies discussed the key topics in the context of their social, political, cultural, and economic environments. Um, reports and products also provided an outlook on geographically and non-geographically defined populations of men. For example, some looked at groups of men in particular neighborhoods, uh, while some looked at men who share similar characteristics or identities, like sexual minority men or immigrant men. Some reports also offered comparisons between men and women, while others examined differences between subpopulations among men as experience unre unequal and um, risks, risks and opportunities. So based on my review, um, a multifaceted island health men's report may involve taking an upstream approach. So while transitions from boyhood to adolescence and eventually adulthood present different challenges, the former two stages lay the foundation for health and well-being. So since the MHO's goal is to produce a report focusing on the health and well-being of men over the age of 18, uh, reporting on the health status of boys, like childhood diseases, does not necessarily make sense. but recognizing and discussing childhood determinants of health, like elementary school education and experiences of bullying and violence would be valuable. As well, um, a few reports emphasize that men's health and social experiences can vary due to distinct identities and group belonging. So this involves understanding that an individual's identities, such as age, sexual orientation, ethnicity, ability, um, that these identities overlap and are continuously shaped by one another. So in other words, acknowledging the notion of intersectionality may help offer an authentic look into the health and well-being of island health men and lead to recommendations and actions that can produce meaningful and equitable health improvement. Uh, in regard to presentation and dissemination, um, the Island Health Report can potentially combine some of the presentation and format findings to communicate their information. So some of my suggestions for presentation based on my review um, include a report with associated testimony or case study videos, or an infographic with a summarization of men's health information and data, and a link to an associated website with additional resources. So in conclusion, the Island Health Medical Health Officers have identified men's health as a key focus area to reduce the gender health gap, and they intend on developing a report to inform public health practice and decision making and drive the development of programs and policies to enhance men's health. So this environmental scan and its findings and the abstracted health domains and indicators aim to create a foundation for the report and hopefully guide the direction of the Island Health Report to help ensure that it's relevant, valuable, and engaging. So just before wrapping up here, I just wanted to give a big thank you to my supervisors, Marisha Gully and Dr. Nathan Lachowski, the Men's Health Report Working Group, and all the MHOs and public health staff at Fort Royal, and um, Dr. Sari Racy for all her guidance through practicum. And that's <laughs> Thank you very much, Amnit. Is there any questions?
Hi, thanks for that. That was really interesting. Um, I have a question about, like, I love that you looked at the way information was disseminated. I love that piece of it. Um, did you find anything about, um, like, what actually worked for men well or better, like some of those um, formats or techniques? Um, not particularly, but there was one report that I came across. So it was actually done by Northern Health and they put out a report and then they consulted with men after and they came up with like um, sort of a publication with the input of men to see how like the information could be delivered to them and utilized by them. But so I didn't really come across exactly what worked for men, but just sort of some broad ideas of how it's been done in the past. Yeah. Great job, that was fantastic. It was really easy to understand. Um, I just had a, a quick question. On the beginning slide, you had um, made a tie between um, masculinity and men's mental health. I was wondering if in your research you had come across um, ways that that's being tackled in a positive manner that allows for um, kind of that intersectional feeling of, of defining masculinity and what it is and a positive way of seeing it. Yeah, so I didn't really get a chance to look too much into, I guess, like solutions. Um, I did come across um, some like health centers and sort of hotlines and things uh, direct, or sorry, focused directly on men and their mental health. Um, but yeah, I didn't really get a chance to really go and look into too many like solutions to address mental health and masculinity. Yeah. Great. Thank you very much.